My name is Sarah Roberts. I'm interviewing Yetika Star Fields for an oral history project in an OSU Native American art course and for the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program. Today is Monday, April 8th, 2013. Hello, Yadika. Um, I just, uh, first question, just wanted to ask you kind of maybe to generally introduce yourself and also when you do introduce yourself, maybe what identifying traits or terms would you use? Um, the terms for me, I, you know, I'm an artist, I'm originally from Oklahoma, so an Oklahoman. Um, I live in New York, a New Yorker in Boston, Bostonian, and a creative person. Um, someone who really enjoys and respects nature and and color and the beauty that's in it. So um, all of that, I guess, can be fit into uh, the description of me. Um, but overall, just a creative person, and uh, I'm an artist. Awesome. Um, where were you born? And um, kind of if after that, w what part of Oklahoma did you spend most of your childhood? I was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma, on uh, December 3rd, 1980, at St. Francis Hospital. And um, we were en route from Hominy, that's where my mom was driving from, my dad and mom. Uh, to take me to the hospital, so I guess I was first lived in Hominy, Oklahoma, in Osage County, and not too long after that, when I was really, really young, moved to Tahlequah, Oklahoma, and uh, so there's a lot of memories there from when I was growing up, and uh, kind of coming to life and realizing, you know, I guess when you're that young, you kind of, there's memories that happen, your first memories, and uh, that stay with you, and so it was Tahlequah, Oklahoma for that the rivers and growing up there. And that was even before I was in uh, kindergarten or first grade. And then we came to uh, Stillwater. And so I've been in Stillwater from then, from first grade on up to high school. And, uh, and then the rest is up on the East Coast. So that was me in Oklahoma growing up here and those different places. But I have family all over the place. so. A lot of traveling around and being everywhere in Oklahoma and getting to know it pretty well. But it's just Hominy, Stillwater, Tahlequah, and that's pretty much it. I grew up here. Great. Um, so you're kind of the childhood in Tahlequah and Stillwater, um, Tahlequah, the rivers you mentioned. Um, what did those environments, what effect did that have on you, you know, as growing up and then also now as an artist? I think growing up, it just the, the serenity, the sereneness of it, and the beauty of it, and just the birds and the lushness of the lower Ozarks, and clear waters, skipping stones, catching crawdads, seeing the fish, it just made a big impact, just kind of this peacefulness to kind of observe. And I'm really thankful that I grew up in a place like that, as opposed to a noisy place like the city or something. You know, it kind of put this ease on me, I feel like. Um, to look at things in a different way, in a different light. And as far as me growing up and being an artist um, today, you know, I think a lot of these elements and those things still appear in, in my works, and they do. I know they do because you know I put them in there, and it's kind of this this lushness, this this movement. Um, you can find peace in it, and that's kind of. Um, the correlation to how I grew up in Tahlequah, how they play into my work. I would say those elements, uh, organic forms, and, um, and color, and the mystery behind it all. What is your earliest memory of art? Or what, how you would define art, or, you know, creative process of some <coughs> kind? What's your earliest memory of something like that? No, oh, I, I know. You know, my mom's an artist, and she was, she's a sculptor now. But I, you know, she did painting back then, and I'm sure we were doing projects in the house. And I just remember being orient, you know, oriented with it, and it was just kind of always around. Um, I think my first memory of it really was when I was in Stillwater, 
um, and this artist came to our school to do an artist talk, and, and he was this illustrator from the Philippines, <laughs> this child illustrator, this children's book illustrator, but he did this demo in front of all the students, all these little kids, and I'm like sitting in the front row, and he just did a quick sketch of a character, and it just really amazed me that he was there doing this in front of us, so he was, was like, that's cool, I want to be doing that, you know, when I'm older that he can do that, then he can make a living. And uh, so I think that's my, that was my first memory as a, as a, you know, I know it's not fine art or painting, but it's illustration, but still it's just the movement that he did it so quickly. And uh, that it was his profession. And I think that was my first memory of an artist and a profession. But art, I think, you know, my first memory of art is just going back to the rivers. I think, you know, that's an art in itself, an organic art. So, but that was my first memory of like, a working artist, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here in Stillwater, kindergarten. That's great. How has your Native American heritage influenced your identity and, you know, obviously the work that you produce today? It's influenced, you know, my identity uh, pretty thickly. You know, I mean, it's where it's from Oklahoma. Uh, my parents, you know, definitely made an effort to bring us in and to get us oriented with the traditional values of who we are and where we're from and know where we're from and know our families. Um, mostly on the Osage side. Um, you know, I was named in the, uh, I'm an Indian name in the Native American church um, when I, on my first birthday. And, um, and then put into the Alonska dances, the Osage, um, Osage dances, when I was pretty young, five or six, and uh, and then you know that happens every year. So you kind of you grow up with it. You grow up knowing all these young guys and seeing them become men like yourself. You see you see the tribe grow and you, you end up knowing a lot through that and through the dancing and you know I'm, I'm happy that I can leave and come back and still have that there's a place here for me there's you know it's your tribe it's your traditions um, and then you know the, the, the dancing part of it the movement the aesthetics of it the regalia the colors those things um, play into my work um, just with the, the colors, and even the creation story um, mm -hmm. has a, has a big part in my work too. Um, the Osage just have a really interesting creation story that all tribes do as well. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you know those elements again going back and saying that mystery of creation too that kind of plays in there, creating my own space, creating my own journey, creating this mystery. But allowing people to free associate with it when they can look up my work because I don't want to shove anything down someone's throat or you know make them see this is this you know and you look at you look at life and then you kind of make your own judgment on it. That's why we're, everyone does that. I feel like on this on this on this earth they make this earth what they want it. You choose your own path. It's kind of just like me painting can look at it, you choose what you want to see with it, but there's some correlation to how I grew up and where I'm from, and the traditions that I know. You mentioned your mom being an artist, I believe, are your are both your parents an artist, and, <coughs> or, sorry, are both your parents artists, and can you talk a little bit about how, you know, that played a role in the culture you were exposed to growing up within, within their artwork, and... Yeah, you know, my, uh, my like I said, they uh, went to... Uh, Institute of American Indian Arts, mm -hmm. and in the 70s, and the 60s, that you know, that was a pretty big time out there for the experimentation and exploration of uh, Native American art. You know, um, abstractions and really laying down some groundwork for what we see today. You know, it's like T. C. Cannon and oh, this is so many, so many of these guys out there, and. Um, you know, it was tough times. It was, you know. um, but, you know, I think um, my dad's a photographer. 
my mom, you know, is a sculptor, works in clay. And I think growing up, growing up in Santa Fe, or being able to go to Santa Fe every August for an Indian market uh, with my parents and kind of being around the art and seeing it, it definitely, you know, kind of eventually built on it. But when I was younger, you know, I was into, just like any other kid, you know, wanting to play with my Game Boy and wanting to <laughs> skateboarding and playing baseball and just and you know I mean I wasn't I, I drew you know I was always a kid that could draw in class and if anyone wanted something drawn then, you know you know yeah, how can you draw this or if they're gonna in, you know the class is gonna enter a poster contest and I would be the one to you know to design it so that was that but you know as far I was just a kid baseball sports skateboarding so that kind of I really didn't really care too much about it I knew it was there so it was just another part of me, but I was really interested in just kind of being a kid, I think, and, and playing sports. And, and and so then, you know, it didn't really, I think high school and, and junior high, late junior high and high school, I think that's when I really started to make the push to look into art more. But I, I think it definitely affected me knowing kind of knowing what was out there and kind of had an, uh, already an understanding of one foot in the door a little bit on it by knowing that, you know, what's out there and, and the depth of it, I think. So, it, it definitely helped and it definitely shaped me uh, to where my work is now, I think, and, uh, and to what it is, you know, um, as to being, a, being an artist, a working artist, you have to work hard to do that. And by the time I was in high school, you know, I already had a Stillwater uh, uh, studio here in Stillwater. Um, as opposed to just a, a classroom studio, I had my own studio. Okay. Was going beyond the the efforts needed just to be an, uh, a junior high, a high school art student. You know, taking my own classes and studying myself. So. You mentioned, um, you know, your graffiti art. I think probably many people maybe are, are aware of that or not. But um, so h having worked with graffiti art for a period of time in Boston, can you talk about how those experiences had affected or changed the evolution of your personal painting style at that time and how you feel it, if it needed to happen for a certain reason or um, what your thoughts are on that? Um, I f it definitely affected my work. Um, I don't know, and it's like these things happen, things happen for reasons I feel like. Um, I don't know what my work would look like if, if, if it didn't but it definitely has a powerful big impact on it that there's no going back and it's like you're infected with it or something or something that's going to carry with you you can't shake it um but it's it definitely changed my work um movement you know there's a lot more there's a lot more movement um, um linear um more breakups in it, kind of collage looking, almost then it kind of looking futuristic, feel like a futurist painting. Um, to a cubist, futuristic cubist, kind of in that sense, breakups and forms and graffiti, you're kind of figuring out a piece. And it's, it's, what graffiti is, it's, it's, it's an alphabet, it's a form, it's a style of writing that only is really meant for other graffiti writers to see. It's like a, a dialogue within the group. So there's kind of this, this hidden texture behind it. And you know, those things that they kind of played, you know, you gotta, you gotta come up with your own style. You have to be original. Do you wanna make your graffiti rock the spot it's on? Dance. Um, you wanna make it flex in the area? So you have to be really creative and and be um, inventive, which is good. I mean, it, and that came into my painting too, an oil painting. It's kind of you know doing something different. But it, it it gave me that more that confidence to make those leaps, really big leaps that a lot of people I feel like might have a hard time doing. It opened the door up to just more imagination and possibilities even in the studio. Um, what are your main artistic influences today? I mean, I know we just talked about graffiti as an influence itself, but like, if you're gonna just begin a new piece, 
or something like that. What are your, what's your artistic inspiration? Do you get it from everyday life, from your background, We've maybe from everything, but what would you say your main artistic inspiration is? I think it's life, what's, what's happening. You know, it's like a, it's a visual diary for me, but it's like what's happening. And sometimes I'll ponder and think about, you know, well, what's really affecting me? How do I feel? Is there, is there something that I really need to kind of express? And then I'll kind of think about that for a while and maybe seek out some images to use or um, figure out. But it's, it's, it always it just comes from me personally and it comes from what's happening around me because it is a visual diary. But if I see something that, and if something just clicks, like, oh man, that, you know, that'd be a good, a good object to maybe start a whole dialogue with or something because there's meaning behind it and then, you know, you do some research into things and you kind of start figuring out new, uh, um, new information for a new body of work. So, but it's, it's pretty much day by day whatever's happening and then if something appears and, and then I'll take it and use it um, and sometimes you're just painting for, for painting just to move the brush around and see what can happen you know, it doesn't all have to be um, so serious for me but also to keep my hand moving is pretty important I feel like I know something by that by that motion, maybe something will come up for you. You'll see something like, okay, I like this. I'm going to work with this. I'm going to figure this out. What is this? What is this I'm doing? And something will evolve. But it's day by day, I would say, for me, what's going on around me. Yeah. Now this question of being, I'm sure you've heard this, of being labeled, you know, a native artist, as opposed to just an artist, often comes up in discussion with those involved in the arts and um, you know that have a Native American background how would you describe yourself and why? Um, I, well, I, you know, I am Native American, I am an artist, I would just describe myself as an artist um, and culturally and traditionally you know, I, I, I understand those things as well um, I'm just an artist that's aware of the American Indian art world you know, I do I participate in it, and I also participate in the mainstream model. Um, I know, like, a Chinese artist is labeled a Chinese contemporary artist, and African, you know, American artist. You know what I mean? Everyone has their own box, I guess, that to put into. Um, so I think that's always going to stick. I can't change who I am. I wouldn't want to. So I guess in, in a sense, I'm always going to be called that, but if I'm in New York City where people really aren't even aware of the American Indian art world, then that doesn't really exist for me there. Mm -hmm. It just depends where I'm at. So do you find um, that being in New York City is beneficial to your career based on the kind of the culture that exists there? I think so, yeah, it's, I don't, you know, I don't walk around with this, with this label on me, you know, I'm just an artist there, there's all kinds of people there, it's a mix, uh, people don't even know what I am there, you know, it's like, I kind of walk around with this uh, disguise of some sort, I don't know, but you're just an artist, people know you as an artist, you know, you don't have to play up to a label. So that's what I enjoy about it. So I like about it. But like I said, you know, I am a part of the American world and here when I come down here or in New Mexico. Um, but I try to be all over the place. I try to move around. I try to go to other countries and paint and meet other artists and just be worldly, I guess, because that's what art is. And you shouldn't just be stuck somewhere that it can be and, you know, but this is only from my own opinion and, and for me, and that's for me only. But I think I think it's where you're at, you know. But I am I am Native American, you know. I grew up that way, and uh, I will forever be one, and I will forever be an artist. But where I will be an artist at, I don't know. That 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 is going to change throughout my life, 
and I'll be known as Yadika, just an artist, and then when I get to New Mexico, artist, got for the artist, American Indian painter. So, it's gonna change throughout my time. Uh, I heard the OSU Museum of Art is about to acquire one of your pieces entitled Renewal. Uh, can you talk a little about the piece and the connection OSU has to that specific painting? I guess it's one of a series of paintings. It's, it's one of a series, yeah, out of three. And um, it was, I painted it to honor the late painter Harry Fonseca. And uh, I really admired his work growing up. And before he passed away, I was shown in this gallery in Santa Fe, Chiara Scurril, Contemporary Arts. And I, they had the group show, the um, yeah, Indian Market group show, and I was, a part, I was a part of it. And so was he, so I was really stoked and happy to be you know, in the same gallery and showing in the same exhibition as him. Although I was in New York and I couldn't make it down that year. Um, so I think the following year he passed away. but. You know, I was kind of a little upset and bummed that I couldn't meet him, didn't get a chance to meet him. Um, but anyways, you know, I really respected his work and I wanted to kind of do more with it than just, you know, he's gone and then all his works still exist and still circulating and a lot of it's still in the Harry Fonseca estate. Um, but I, I wanted to say something, I mean, you know, I wanted to honor him and paint something that you know, something that's based off what he did, and he did these works called uh, the Rite of, Rite of Spring, or the Four Seasons, and he did kind of a, a drip painting, Pollock style, based on the seasons, and just there's so many drips to where when you stand back, it, it really gives that depth effect of, like you're looking at a cherry blossom tree in bloom, um, in different seasons, in different way, at night, in the day, in the fall, you know, just utilizing colors and placement to create that feeling of that season. And I really, I really like that, you know, again, going back to nature and whatnot, and just use, using color to create a feeling and depth. I really kind of gravitated towards those. So I wanted to use those. You know, there was a cherry blossom in the backyard that, and I remember starting them in winter, and there was snow on the ground, and then as the spring happened, I watched the cherry blossoms bloom as these paintings did as well. So all these things were happening to her. I was like, okay, this is making sense. You know, I should be painting this. And um, so that's what these paintings are, are based on. Um, you know, but instead of dropping paint and splatter paint, I actually, you know, went in there and kind of created the the branches first, and then overlaid the branches with all these blossoms. Um, painting each pretty small blossom to detail. Um, so that was it was a meticulous job painting it, but you know, it was for something and you're, when you're painting it's like a meditation, you're in the zone. And you can paint for twelve hours straight and um, and so just to bring it out, but paint in that way to where it looks like a, from a far back it looks like it's pointillism or dri dripping paint too. To kinda of create that, that feeling as well that he had. And then the painting that renewal is it's kind of a mixture of those two pieces. Um, there was like a cherry blossom uh, day and then a night one, and then the middle one, the renewal, which is what well, she's going to acquire. Uh, it's kind of like a mix of those two pieces, but also this drapery, this this kind of darkness, this this shrouded. What what is underneath there? I don't know. Um, but that's you know again up to the viewer for free association. But it's it's kind of like you know I, I feel like when when there's a death or something, something's draped over a casket or something. You know, in our ways, it's, you know, you put a blanket over over someone, and, you know, they're buried. Um, but it's kind of like an end of an era. You know, it's kind of like when you move or something, you drape something over it, and you leave the house if you're. I don't know. There's just it. It's it. It's it signifies something. It's a metaphor, but with these really kind of gold paint emblems um, of, of beautiful fabric too. You know, so that's on there too, but the cherry blossom. So there's still life in there. There's still life that's happening, but it's kind of like looking beyond that life and knowing it. And, but what what is underneath there? So it's kind of this mysterious painting. Um. So that's what renewal is, and I had a chance 
actually that a couple years back uh, the Idol Jordan Museum in Indianapolis had an exhibition and they picked that painting and it was displayed next to a Harry Fonseca piece. How cool. Yeah, it was really cool. And the painting that he had it was like these really like neon pinkish fade to red and blue and so it really worked with that piece and so they were finally kind of like together so I think it was like that painting was meant to happen that, that exhibition you know it just all made sense so that's great that's how renewal happened well I'm sure we're very honored to receive that and uh, um, I guess a little off topic can I ask what you're doing when you're not creating what are some of your other hobbies um, cycling mm -hmm. I, I love cycling I'm an avid cyclist um, in New York I was a bike messenger for five years so that took a lot of my time up but you know, it's pretty dangerous and the money's it's not good at all um, but I, I enjoy that riding here in the city um, well, pretty much I'm um, either in the studio or traveling or seeing friends or going up to Boston and seeing friends or um but it pretty much all my time is kind of just dedicated and surrounded to, to art and creating it or going to talk with people about it or yeah so a lot of it's to that or just walks in the in the park or something reading I don't have a TV or anything, so maybe I'll watch some films on the laptop sometimes, but pretty much cycling and painting. Okay. Um, I know you've worked with youth in the past, both in, you know, in various locations where you've been. What kind of inspired you to work with youth in your first sense? Um, I, it's, how did it happen? I think working with youth kind of happened. There was this thing called Pop Life, Doug Miles, the Apache Skateboards used to put on. And, you know, he brought me into there, and he still works with kids, too, now, and it's the skateboarding culture. And I think that might have been my first kind of real approach to working with kids and doing kind of little mural workshops and having kids work with me. And, and then through that, that kind of led to uh, just more opportunities and people like, you've worked with kids before, you know, would you be interested in doing this? Yeah. And then, you know, I, after growing up a little more and kind of being mature about it, you know, as I realized, you know, this is, you know, it's important to work with kids. It's important to talk with them. They, you know, every kid means that, you know, they're humans. And a lot of time, parents don't have time for their kids. And, uh, and I know art isn't like the biggest subject, you know, everyone's, bound, you know, jumping for and whatnot. But it is, I think it's a good self-esteem uh, booster and confidence booster and um, it's it's good for the brain to think that way and and kind of develop that way and um, it gives an outlet an expression I think the worst thing that people can do is hold things in and you know kind of let it build up so I it, so I like talking with kids like that and kind of giving them you know um, kind of you know some good accounts and I guess on that and talking to them about art and, and letting them explore it and telling them it's okay to do it you know and um, I know so you know like one of the artists came to my school and talked and that really affected me if I can do that to a few kids then you know my job is done and um, so especially like when I you know, in New York taught at a couple places that are kind of rough and um and the kids enjoy it, you know. Um, and I hope, you know, it kind of takes them out of their, the mindset of where they're at for the day or whatever, and they can kind of continue that and practice it maybe. So, yeah, it, you know, it's happening. I work with kids and I really respect it and I, I enjoy it because it's giving back. And I think as the artist's job, for me, it, you know, I think that, you know, it's part of my mission as well as to talk with people and share what I know. Um, the the Yataka Fields Mural Workshop, which is currently being offered here at OSU, 
is definitely an exciting and novel opportunity uh, for many art and music students. Uh, how did your role develop in that capacity? Um, I think, well, I know it developed through my understanding of, um, of live painting and murals and uh, participating in, um, in that style of painting in New York. Mm-hmm. And, um, and even going back to pop life, I don't know, like about just skateboards, I think that's where we're really started. And then there's like music and then you're painting to bring a painting out. And so I've, you know, I've done it probably for the last six years. So my knowledge of it and understanding of creating something on the fly in, in a live audience and environment, I think um, that's how this project came to you know, uh, fruition. It's like my knowledge and understanding of painting like that. And being from Oklahoma, I'm sure, you know, I'm an Oklahoma artist. Um, so that's how that came to be, pretty sure. That's great. I have some questions about your the live painting in general, but to continue on, you know, about the mural workshop here at OSU, um, in general, kind of when you, maybe your ideal for that program, how did you hope to influence the OSU students through the experience? I kind of wanted to, you know, open up that gap between, you know, uh, um, art and just keeping it in the studio, but also bringing it out to the public's eye. Um, getting the students out in front of the public eye, you know, there's a lot of things that OSU has where sports, it's a public thing. And so people get to know the students in that way, but, you know, as artists, you know, we can do the same thing and be out there. and. Uh, showing our, what our talents are as well. But to kind of open up another door to the Oklahoma arts and kind of do something new, you know, let people see that this exists and this happens, especially the connection and collaboration between music and and color and, and light painting. Um, but I wanted to, you know, to get the students uh, familiar with collaboration and to know, um, get to know someone, but to bring people together through it, you know, um, it's something, you know, I know collaboration isn't taught, it's not a class, it's not, a, they don't teach that, um, they don't teach the music and art together, um, and those are things that you could actually have classes with, you know, but this is just one particular class that had that, and so kind of, and it's going to allow kids to kind of, you know, look, look at their work maybe a little differently, look at the other person's work differently, and maybe collaborate more in the, in the future on things, uh, or maybe set up their own live painting event here in Stillwater, you know, kind of keep things uh, fun and moving. Um, but, in, but in the end, I just want them to have fun, you know, and, uh, and explore what they love to do in a different way. Um, something, you know, but some, do something and have something and create something for them um, that, you know, OSU doesn't offer, but in this course we did, and, and, and to have a performance with it. So, but, you know, they can take it with, they can take uh, what they what they got from it and hopefully use it throughout their life in, in whatever way they want to um, with art and creating. I think anyone that was participated in it or was there watching, I think, would attest to the fact that it was very successful. Um, would you say that you came across any challenges during the, the workshop itself, be, whether it being communicating in the beginning from New York or when you got here, trying to get a cohesive, you know, plan together? What I'm just giving suggestions mm-hmm. to you, you know, challenges involved. I think the challenges, yeah, it was I think definitely being in New York and and, um, and away from students because I think you know um, whenever you're kind of working with people and. Uh, this capacity in this large of a group, it's it's good to be there, I think, you know, in, in front of everyone and talking. Um, it's definitely harder over Skype and emails and, and Facebook, but we made it work, and, you know, coming here, it was good to finally get here and kind of talk with everyone. Um, and I'm happy that the panels, you know, had already been worked on, giving the students an idea and uh, opportunity to kind of work with the other peers and kind of um, sort of get ready and understand the collaboration and who they're working with early on because that was 
the big basic part of it. Um, the other, maybe just kind of finding the right schedules between what other students had and then scheduling conflicts, I think, was another one. Um, trying to get everyone together and, um, and working more. And then maybe the other would have been like during the performance, you know, just really, you know, the time, I know the time went by quick and it's kind of just getting everyone, because it's everyone's first time to be live painting, you know, and you know, it's, it's, it's going to be what it, what it wants to be, it's going to turn out how it's going to turn out. Um, but it was a pretty big event for, for, for our first time. Anything, you know, when I first live painted, it wasn't that big, you know, <laughs> I had a little leeway, but, um, but I felt pretty strong and confident, you know, and I knew what, how, how these things work out, so, you know, and then going, kind of working, bringing the pieces out, I, um, that's always a challenge, too, in itself, and, uh, trying to create a composition, uh, with what everyone did, kind of tighten it up, you know, kind of go back through it, and it's so large. So that might have been, but I feel like we did a good job. I was really happy with the, what everyone created, and uh, even myself going through it and kind of pulling things out and, uh, and and figuring it out. And the students, music students, did an awesome job as well. So, and I think everyone had a good time. You know, so I'm, just, I'm still thinking about it. You know, a bit between this mural that I'm doing now and that, you know, there's just a lot of information that's just kind of circling in my head. And I really haven't digested any of it, I don't think, so, but it was really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I had a great time, so it was, it was a really amazing, amazing experience. Um, kind of going back to, you know, how you got to where you are today, um, you know, how do you describe that technique of live painting, in quote, you know, a lot of people maybe, especially from around here, don't even know necessarily what that is, so I know, um, well, I guess start with that. You know, what? How would you describe live painting? Uh, live painting is just kind of it's just being up in front of a lot of people or outside in a park. It's just like plain air. Just it's like landscape painting, mm -hmm. but usually live painting is at an event or function, um, and there's music and there's a lot of people. And it's a festive time. And people are watching you, so you're working kind of. Um, with the time limit and you're working fast and you're kind of working with the energy that's around you mm -hmm. and so you're creating some a piece that's kind of reflecting that or a lot of times I know a lot of people that they, I paint in a way to where it's just kind of creating you know I'm, I'm searching for something I'm figuring something out I'm creating something beautiful and fast and unique um, in an abstract way and I know in New York I'm kind of one of the only painters that really does that there's a few, and so, so, but a lot of people I know paint faces, faces. You know, it's something that everyone can recognize, you know, and, they, and they're holding a picture, and then they're painting from the picture, but I just totally let go and just kind of fill, fill it out and just kind of have fun, and it's, 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 um, it's, it's a challenge more so in that way, and then uh, utilizing the brush and kind of making a performance and movement as well. Uh, to the to the strokes of it and kind of creating your own your your own music, you know, the elegance through what you paint you know, and your brush strokes, and that's kind of that's my life painting for me, and um, just kind of building it and building it until it's done, until it's over with, and uh, that's kind of what it is. It's kind of it's it's a dance. You're like performing, you're performing, you're in front of people. I prefer doing that as opposed to just kind of standing there and just painting. You know, um, I want to give something to the viewer, the people. You know, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, so. I think I think it's um, great. That's I think part of what's so interesting and unique about that is the form of communication. That audience is a, f a huge factor. Mm -hmm. That you know your performance of that painting is based on you know the audience that's responding almost you know, just their presence there. Mm -hmm. And so, kind of one, that captive audience, you know, the one thing that I had, the question is, you know, 
for example, like the piece that we just created with OSU, now that it's going to be installed in a permanent, you know, facility, permanent area, you know, do you, how do you feel, you know, that since it was live painted, do you feel that that painting will forever have the memory of that performance? Or, you know, how do you feel that now audiences that will walk by it in a fixed position rather than the one that was took place, you know, on Friday? Can you talk a little bit about, am I making mm -hmm. sense, the yeah. difference between a captive and a static audience? I think, I, I'm glad it's at the Saraton Center because whatever happens there is the sad, what's this, it's mm -hmm. music usually, and people are walking out of there from a performance mm -hmm. with the movement still embracing them. And so these pieces will work really well right there because these pieces are always going to have that movement that was created that day. It's never going to lose that. That's how it was created. Um, and it's going to, it has that spontaneity. It, it's going to always carry that. Um, so it, it's good that it's in the Saracen Center because a lot of performances have happened there. There's music that still resonates in there somewhere. And it's just going to echo off those pieces. It kind of gives the Saracen Center a little more, you know vibrant sound, I guess, when there's nothing playing on stage. So I think it's good that it's there, and but it'll carry that. It'll do what it needs to do on its own, I think, you know, the, you know, those panels are alive. When was your first experience live painting? Probably a long time ago, then I can't even remember it. Um, graffiti. Okay. It's, it's a live painting. It's at night. <laughs> live painting on a wall. <laughs> Fast. And not wanting to be seen. Or be seen. Um, that was my first experience with a bit live painting in, 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 in a legal note in front of an audience. It would be probably like in 2003. Huh. Yeah, 2003. 2002, I think. Mm, yeah, in that way, there's music and people are watching, you know, so you're creating towards the music. So that was, yeah, 2002, I would say. And then I've done them all over the place, you know, I mean, I've all over the United States, and we've been uh, art battles. We went to Spain, that was really fun. That was a really big stage, like thousands of people one night. It was just like, it was, it was weird, you know, but you're, you're painting to be seen and make strokes and, you know, just, it's, there's like a, an announcer speaker, it's like WWF and my painting, it's like, <laughs> it's like the biggest stage for it, I guess. It's, pre it's pretty unique and fantastic. So, yeah, I, you know, I would have never thought it was being a painter to take you there, I guess, but I mean, I, to be like on a stage on like a, a big arena, like a superstar or something, and you're like, yeah, vote for me, you know. Uh, it was weird, but you know, I'm I'm a studio painter too, so I I, I try, you know, I try to do that, but then I do my life painting too, and I don't want to do my life painting way too much to where it overpowers and it you know takes away from the beauty of me just resting in the studio and painting and figuring something out, but not trying to rush it because I understand life painting so much, you know. So. Just kind of know your limit, I guess, because I feel like it can do. It can be hurtful, maybe, if you just only do that. And I know a lot of artists that do a lot of light painting to where it's that's that is their thing. That's what they do. That's how they make money. That's you know, they're light painters. But, so. And so you would, you're just an artist that does, you do, you paint and it happens to be live painting and how would you? And studio, so, <laughs> and studio, so I try not to, you know, this is, I think this is important, so, you know, this is coming down here and doing this, it was important, it's working with students. It's not just about me, it's not just about me laughing in front of an audience, but it's about discussing it, talking about um, what's happening here, opening up another dialogue with it, with Oklahoma State and painting and the arts. So this, you know, this is great, this is more than just me and my painting, um, 
Um, and then also work in the mural too. So this, you know, and I'm having a lot of time to sit there and really work with that. And that's like a studio piece to me. But I think as far as me like painting, you know, I don't seek it out like every week. If there's something big that I feel like I want to do or if I get invited to paint here and I feel like it's in my best interest to do so, then I'll do it. But, you know, it's, I'm not, I don't want to go out every, every week. Because you can in New York. You can do that, you know. And, and you pr probably will sell your piece that night too. You know, if you can see that, you know, I'd love to buy that piece. So, but, you know, it's not about that for me. Um, just to create, to create and sell. But I want to keep something whole, wholesome with myself and, and, and painting and then in the studio and then and then go out and, and live paint and really work something else out. So if that makes sense, I don't know. You know I'm, yeah, I'm very opinionated and personal, personalized with my own art and I don't want to keep it this kind of this really wholesome, beautiful thing like that kind of just throw it to the wind sometimes, you know, so. Definitely makes sense. I think that's great. Um, you mentioned this this other mural a few times, just so we can get some information on that. Um, so you were commissioned to paint the mural, which will be <coughs> opposite the original mural inside the Postal Plaza, the new OSU Museum of Art. Um, can you talk about how you're approaching that task when you were first, you know, the research and inspiration, if you were given any limitations? Um, that kind of thing. I wasn't given any limitations. Awesome. I don't know if that's a bad or good thing. And um, but the piece, I know we discussed abstractions. We prefer it to be abstract. No problem. <laughs> 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 so the other painting on the other side is by Grace Hamilton, and it was done in 1963, and it's really uh, you know, uh, looking to Oklahoma at that time maybe romanticized a bit, but, you know, there's the plains, there's Native Americans and teepees, and uh, it's, so it's really not about Payne County, I think, it's just, but there is old central, the old library here, it's right there, I think that's what it's called, and that's in the middle of the piece, so I guess that's Payne County and the rest is Oklahoma in general, and there's cattle and oil men and homesteaders and cowboys on horses and it's a landscape and there's a blue sky at the top and um, so the piece I'm doing I, I when I do murals I don't prefer to paint figures um, just because that would be eliminating a lot of Oklahoma you know that would be not discussing whoever's here right now only key figures, and that's not what Oklahoma is. It's it's uh, it's a togetherness. It's everyone, um, and also buildings or whatever. And it's kind of I'm painting kind of the new Stillwater, but it's only through the essence that I know. Growing up, which is the colors of sunsets, the color of that lushness that I talked about growing up in Oklahoma, in northeastern Oklahoma, lower Ozarks the flow of water, what's underneath us, red dirt, the colors of the sky, it can be very blue, a lot of really amazing clouds, the dark colors for a night where you can see the stars, and very bright colors, vibrant colors, kind of like, you know, as we progress, I think in more modern times, colors are being used more often than they were in 1963. You know, um, and there's going to be the elements. That, you know, I I love using the since it is Oklahoma. I'm not painting directly like a flycatcher or so they're tell, but there's little pieces of it in there. You know, the state bird kind of owning what is a state and that bird, and, and then there'll be little. Um, Rose buds scattered around in there as well, and um, I want to do gold in there, kind of just the richness of the people mm -hmm. who've come along the way to kind of form something unique in Stillwater as well. But that's that richness I want. I want to implant in there. That's kind of just like to celebrate everyone and not just a singular person. 
even the tribes, everyone, um, Native Americans. It's purely an essence piece. It's purely based on my feelings and, and what I've what I've seen growing up here through forms and movement and color creating Oklahoma and Payne County, but Oklahoma in general. So I think that's that's what that piece is gonna be. Finally, if you were to look back and think about, I don't know, everything, just your childhood, everything, how you've grown up in high school, I know you had a lot of influences, and that's really when you started, you know, like, exploring art and researching and everything, and um, then your career today, do you think, if you could have ever dreamt about how, you know, an art, your, your career would have evolved, um, do you think it was predictable, or do you feel every day that you live is a new adventure, or, or something? It's not one of those two options. How do you feel that? I feel like every day is a, a new adventure. It's a new path. I mean, you choose your own roads. You make your own decisions. And they're going to put you somewhere. Um, good or bad. I'm thankful for the most part. They've been good decisions. And, and you know, I feel humbled to where I am. But I feel lucky. And at the same time, you know, I, I want to respect that and, and be healthy with it and give give back to that, you know, work hard to kind of keep it going. Um, you know, life's challenging, and to be an artist is a challenge as well. So I feel, you know, a blessed and happy and thankful, you know, that whatever's happened and my work can be celebrated and shared and, and seen, then, um, you know, that's, I'm pretty happy about it and, and ecstatic. And, and I think about it, but, uh, you know, I want to keep it going, you know, there's things to say, and, um, you know, I want to be humble, but I want to let people know, you know, that, you know, um, this isn't just about showing and, and being stingy with, with art and money or whatever, but it's about sharing and, if I can get where I am at now, then I'm definitely going to be giving back because, you know, it's like almost karma or something. I do believe in that, but it's like, I want to keep it going, you know. And I feel like through me working with students, too, is a good way to keep my work going and teaching and, and letting it exist. That's great. Do you have anything else you'd like to add that I haven't covered with a question or something that you really feel is important to you or... Anything that you'd like to, to say? Um, you know, I'm just happy to be here working um, with students and be at Oklahoma State University and be back in Oklahoma and Stillwater and creating uh, this mural here and uh, to have been part of this awesome project with the students in the music department and, um, and to be able to share my work through that. And, uh, you know, I'm happy that this could happen and for the future of Oklahoma State and the arts too, and the new museum that they're building so the general public can see all the amazing works that's in the collection and understand the art here a little bit more. And that is pretty much it, I think. Great. Well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure interviewing you, and thank you for your time, and um, appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.